rescuers are racing against the clock to find six people who are unaccounted for after a bridge collapse in Baltimore. It's now more than 12 hours since a cargo ship slammed into the Francis Scott Key Bridge, destroying one of the main transit and shipping arteries in one of America's biggest metropolitan centers. And it could have been even worse. The ship did send a mayday call about power issues as it approached the bridge. President Biden vowing to leverage the full power of his administration for the response say the federal government will foot the bill for the reconstruction of this crucial bridge. Let's get you out to Baltimore now with CNN's Gabe Cohen. Uh, Gabe, what more are you learning about the operations there at the scene? Well, Jess, it's definitely still an active scene. As you look behind me, you might be able to hear that helicopter hanging just overhead, not far behind where we're standing here, uh, right by the Patapsco River. And as you look in the distance, well beyond it, you can see that massive container ship still sitting out there and those huge sections of the key bridge that came down early this morning, including that mangled piece hanging over the deck of that bridge, right over the front of it. Uh, look, search and rescue crews have been out here for more than 12 hours at this point, working to try to find those six missing construction workers who were on the bridge when that container ship struck one of the columns and brought down a huge portion of it. And they're covering this massive part of the river, combing it, looking for any uh, sign of life at this point. And it is really expansive because of how much of the bridge came down. We're also seeing emergency vehicles on the riverbank that are assisting with this. We're not just talking about local authorities, the Coast Guard participating as well, uh, several agencies involved. Now we do know, according to officials, that that ship, as it was coming near the bridge early this morning, just after 1 a.m. Eastern time, it started to lose control. And in video, it shows uh, that the lights on the ship flickering, that there was some sort of power issue. We don't know exactly what went wrong. But the crew on the ship sent out a mayday call, and officials say that police were able to get that call quickly enough that they were able to stop some of the traffic that would have been crossing the bridge. Look, this is a huge interstate, 695, that is a major artery in and out of Baltimore and really up and down the Acela Corridor, people who are traveling between Washington and New York. If this happened during rush hour with the number of vehicles that would have been on there, we'd be talking about potentially dozens of cars in this river. Fortunately, though, the governor of Maryland says because police got that warning, they were able to stop some of the traffic and most likely save lives. What we don't know at this hour is why those construction workers were not told or if they were told why they were on the bridge still at that point when the, br when the bridge came down. Eight of them at least ending up in the water. Two have been pulled out. One of them unharmed. The other taken to the hospital with serious injuries, though uh, they have since been discharged. Uh, but again, so many questions as the search and rescue operation continues early this afternoon. All right, Gabe Cohen for us. Thanks so much. We're going to keep checking in with you throughout the day. And let's go now to Brian Todd, who is there on the water in Baltimore. Uh, Brian, what are you learning? Well, Jessica, we've been able to kind of shift our vessel around to a better vantage point now to get you a better look at the vessel in question. That's the Dali. That's the cargo ship now, there. Now you can see we're at a different angle than we were before. We're a few hundred yards away from it. Um, you can see the sun hitting the vessel now, which gives you a better view of the cargo ship, of the container ship, and the wreckage, and the sheer force with which it hit this bridge. You can see that. You can see the damage there. There's concrete that's uh, kind of smashed up against the boat. There are remnants of the bridge that are lying across the bow of the boat there. And you can just see that the sheer devastation uh, and, and, the, and the entire section, the middle section of the bridge that's missing. Several vessels now are buzzing around this, uh, this vessel. Uh, they are rescue vessels. They are dive teams. At least 50 uh, dive teams have been in and out of the water all morning long. That, that one grayish vessel over there to the left of the container ship, we're told, is the Catlet. That's an Army Corps of Engineers boat that has sonar capability. We've also seen tugboats uh, tugging in an oil boom here, looking for remnants.
evidence of spillage in the water some pretty treacherous conditions we're told that this water is forty six to forty eight degrees fahrenheit that's very dangerous very cold so dangerous for people to to be in the water for more than about an hour so it's dangerous even for the divers it's about a hundred and eighty five foot drop from the top of that bridge uh... into the water what we're told is that uh... by officials was that they tracked a few vehicles that they believe dropped into the water but they do not know if there are any people inside those vehicles when they dropped into the water one of the vehicles was observed with its lights on so that's this this is some of the devastation that we can show you from this angle we're on the baltimore harbor side of the bridge the other side of the bridge is the patapsco river and again these vessels that are just you know moving back and forth all around the cargo ship here some of them are rescue vessels looking for uh, the six people who are still unaccounted for uh, from this accident as we kind of uh, pan to our left here we can give you an idea of the disruption of commerce that green vessel over there that's the carmen that is a a huge uh, container ship that carries cars into the port of baltimore from other ports that vehicle and many excuse me that vessel and many other vessels large container ships and others are now stranded in the port of baltimore they cannot move no major uh, ship traffic can come in and out of the baltimore harbor and that is a major economic disruption. The governor of Virginia, Glenn Youngkin, did say a short time ago that they're diverting uh, some ocean carriers to the Port of Virginia, which is in the Hampton Roads area south of here, but whether that is going to kind of alleviate uh, the disruption in vessel traffic, uh, that remains to be seen, but there is a huge economic disruption that you're talking about here, and we can show you some of that with, with the lack of uh, major uh, ship traffic into the Baltimore Harbor and out of the harbor now, uh, Jessica. And we, we, can, we can point out that this vessel was outbound at the time uh, that, it was, that, the, that it struck this bridge uh, at a little bit before 1.30 this morning, Jessica. All right, Brian Todd for us there in Baltimore. Thanks so much for that update. Boris? And again, we're